Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, I am going to share a quick poll with you guys. If you guys could fill that out, that'd be very, that'd be very helpful for us. Also, if the answer is other, if you could just share that in the uh, in the chat, that'd be great. The chat is private, so no one's going to see your, no one will be seeing your uh, responses. So let me turn it over to you right now. Yep. If you guys could fill out that uh, that poll, that'd be fantastic. And we'll give everyone another minute or two to join. Maybe just another minute, and we could get started. And then if you if you guys don't mind, if it is other, if you could share that with us, that would that would just help us. We we're interested in how you guys are managing costs. Of course, the chat is private, so no one will be able to see your responses. Okay, we have a few more people jumping in. It's nice to see some uh, see some familiar faces and uh, some a lot of a lot of new faces as well. So guys, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Give everyone another another 15 seconds or so to join and then we will get started. Great. Okay guys, I think we I think we can get started. Uh, so everyone, thank you very much for joining. Uh, my name is Jared and with me we have Pedro Bronco. So for this that uh, for this demonstration, we're going to show you a pretty common example of a customer that is speaking to us. Uh, their data is in a complete mess. They have what we refer to as Excel chaos, and they are really unable to manage their costs, keep up with revisions, versions, and they, keep, they can't really keep their bomb up to date. Um, so for today, we're going to use Bronco Bikes as an example. And basically what I have to do is I have to send the bill of material to my manager and I just want to make sure the prices are updated. That's, that's really about it. So this is the, uh, the bike that I want to look at. I could see right off the bat that there are four different bombs for the same, uh, bike. So I have to first figure out which one is going to be the latest. So just by looking at the names, maybe this is, maybe this one's the most up to date. So let me, let me open the, let me open this one up. I hope you guys could see the screen okay. Let me enlarge this just yep. a little. So yep. I am, the first thing that really comes up to my mind is that I can see revision numbers four. So I'm not sure if this is updated or if this was changed. So if I'm able to just go to the previous one, I'm gonna assume that this is it. I can see that level six, which is the one I'm looking at that is, uh, that is four was in indeed three so this was updated the price was 33 bucks before and the price is still 33 bucks so i'm not sure if there's this is not updated or not but that's let's assume that let's assume that it was so there are also some pdfs on this so let me go ahead and open one up just to make sure and of course it's not working so let me try again and it looks like it's a broken link. Fantastic. So let me try to open up another one. And here we go. Sorry, it opened up on another screen. This one actually finally worked. So the one that we're looking at is going to be the reflector kit assembly right there. It seems like everything's okay. The, the part number is the same. The file name is the same. Revision I have is B. Um, okay, great. The revision that is on here is A. So again, the costing is this going to be the same uh, and also we have a quantity on hand of one so i'm not sure if that kind of makes this obsolete so i'm not sure what we actually have on hand because this 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 part right here is it might be from the previous uh revision which is now outdated so now i might have to go to uh, finance team it's made in-house so i have to go to production to see what the actual price is I don't want to send any outdated pricing to my manager because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be hurting if I do. Um, so now I have to go to a bunch of other teams, make sure everything is up to date, and really all I wanted to do was just send this bomb to my manager and make sure the prices are up to date. But if I do that now, there's probably going to be some repercussions. 
and I have to kind of figure this stuff out. So a five minute task kind of, this might have turned into a, a day task or a couple day tasks just to get everything up to date. Um, so really, how am I supposed to be managing these costs? The revisions are wrong, the revisions are updated. Um, so it's kind of, it's a little bit of a mess and it's hard to distinguish which one is accurate, which one is kind of more out of date. So really the goal of this demo is to show you how OpenBOM solves this issue for your mechanical and electrical components by creating a single source of truth that is shareable for all members of your team, your company. In addition, you could send this to your supplier and they could also fill in the, uh, the costs right here. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with that, of course, you could zip this all up and you could send this to them. So I think we could get started. Uh, Pedro, I'm happy to uh, move it over to you. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that example, Jared. So it's very common that we have uh, that typical scenario where uh, you might have some broken drawing links, uh, trying to keep information uh, accurate and updated manually. Uh, also trying to, you know, keep revisions on, on drawings or documents, also updated those, uh, those CAD revision levels, uh, keeping also costs updated when you have an, an item that is used into multiple sub-assemblies or multiple products. So Excel, a lot of the data there is static. So the goal is today is just to show you OpenBOM as a solution to, to move uh, away from Excel to manage costs. Uh, also show you how easy it is to uh, import data from Excel, so you can see yourself uh, moving away from it and, and start using OpenBOM as, as your solution for costing uh, bombs more and more efficiently. So uh, let's get started. So um, as for many as you know, uh, but for those that don't, uh, OpenBOM, it's, uh, it's a cloud-based system. So all you need to do is log in and have access to the latest build materials for costing. So, and, and just having a system where you can log in and you have the belief that you're using the latest, a lot better to that sort of scenario that Jason shown that you are, you know, dealing with files, with Excel files, with different names, different revisions, different folders. So it's really can be a challenge to actually understand which one you are working. And if you are on a bigger team or a more complex product, this and multiplies over and over. So first, I'm going to show you how easy it is to move uh, from Excel to start using OpenBOM for importing existing build materials. So the first thing you're going to do is import your parts list or items master. We call it a catalog. It's a catalog of items with part numbers, descriptions, costs, all these attributes that you want to manage for anything that is related to your product. So I'm going to show you first how easy it is to import data from, from Excel. So we're going to start to import a parts list or a catalog. And uh, and that's like the example from Jason that we are using a uh, you know similar data uh, from Jason. So, uh, for example, this uh, would be a first import is uh, just an item uh, master. I'm going to show you how it looks. So you can import uh, thumbnails, uh, part numbers, descriptions, you know, costs, anything that you have updated already. Uh, you can use an Excel file like just this one. Uh, and then, uh, then, you know, it's very easy to create a catalog and up upload that just directly from from open to open bomb, just on a with a single uh, single click. So all all that data that you see there, including thumbnails, you can you can bring it in. Uh, if you have CAD data already and you bring data from CAD, like systems like uh, SolidWorks, for example, uh, you can also uh, you know bring the CAD data with descriptions. And then uh, you update with Excel uh, other fields like cost. We will append that data uh, as long as the part numbers uh, match. Uh, so you can also do that updating parts list. The next step will be updating a, in uploading a bill of material. So I'm going to create uh, just one uh, item for that uh, you know top item, the first product. Um, and I'm going to just upload another bomb from Excel. So we're going to create a, an empty bomb for, from this. It's going to start to be empty. I'm going to not select any sort of a bomb templates. A bomb template can help you to bring uh, default catalogs, uh, default columns. You can also bring some extra bomb line items if you want to add like labor or extra costs to it. So you can, uh, you know, have a lot of documentation what a, a bomb template is. But for now, I'm going to just use the default one and import from Excel. Uh, you know, a similar case from 
adjacent needs where we can start moving to use open bomb to manage costs so let's uh import from excel so a similar file uh this one only has uh you know level for the assembly hierarchy like the uh, parent and child hierarchy um and also the part number and quantity so let's import this one to open bomb and um, uh, you know very easy you have like a full uh, item uh, item structure. Uh, you can also see it uh, multi-level. You can also see the assigned catalogs. So uh, this is where we're going to bring those attributes, uh, and uh, well, that information is going to be uh, filled. And uh, you you have uh, you know complete bill material here. So look look how easy you can start moving away from Excel and, and start working a, a complete bill of material. Can be multi-level so you can see all those uh indentation all those uh different levels cranks assemblies uh, sub assemblies and uh, you start having a, a, a database uh, so uh, if you actually you know make some changes in uh let's say you know uh, uh let's see, let's say you change an attribute so let's see how this is uh you know a lot better than excel because it's, it's actually a, a database so let's look at the the reflector so this is the catalog this is the item master or parse list we have the reflector there and you can actually update things directly from the bomb itself like if you name something differently notice that it updates real time so i'm gonna put a, a reflector to reflect the red and notice on the left it uh, it updates instantly so the same with with costs like you can update the cost of the reflector that you imported from nine dollars to ten and this is going to update uh you know also instantly so let me bring that reflector back again and just put it on screen so there's the cost of the reflector there you can also use some some of the excel functions that you like so that's also a a great thing that uh, it's a it's a comfortable interface that you know if everyone you know from procurement sales they can they can use this interface because it's comfortable to use it looks like excel but it's it's not excel like if i change that one to uh sorry so if i change that one to 10 sorry we'll bring that again it was my mistake so there it is i want to update the pillar material on this side of the reflector and i update this to 10. we are also updating costs real time so it's a it's a database. So you update the cost on any sort of a, a bill of material, and it's going to update where used in every single place. You can create uh, revisions and save uh, data in time. At any time, you're going to freeze the data. So whatever cost, whatever description was there at that time is going to be frozen. You can go back to it and see how it looked. But if you keep if you update any cost or any description, any metadata is going to update all in all where used, and that's and that's great. So let's look on another examples where we can manage costs uh, differently with a, with a bit more evolved example. Uh, one common uh, requirement is do uh, cost rollups, which is adding a few children, creating a bomb, and then adding uh, costs to assemblies and sub-assemblies, and then costing the top parent uh, with, uh, with the total cost. So we have functions to do cost rollups. Uh, let's continue uh, with the reflector example. So uh, here I have added a, a bit of more data to it and uh, look at the, this example. So we have the two bolts uh, and we have a cost per item, $2. And the total cost is being calculated just using simple formulas like Excel. And we have a total enable on the bottom. I also notice that the, the assembly, the sub-assembly here, already has the cost also updated there. So we can update, uh, you know, cost rollups from different levels, just doing things like this. If I change the cost of the per item to $3, uh, this is going to update the total cost of this line item. So plus two, that's correct. And then the cost, total cost has also increased. And it's also updating the, the sub-assembly costs in its item info. So it's very, uh, very easy to uh, do these sort of calculations. So this is ex in Excel, you are, you know, nothing updates, it's just text. You need to update in one Excel file, then you need to go find the others and you know, do all this manually. It can take a long time. And you also can lose accuracy, you can have mistakes there. And it's it's a lot more, uh, more challenging. So from here, you can even see 
uh, you know, how many do I have in stock for for the reflector? I, you can very quickly jump in to show the item info for each bomb line. And you can see that uh, the information from the reflector, you have uh, five, almost 500 units in stock. And you can see uh, information like uh, you know, total, total inventory costs, for example. Uh, you, can see, uh, you can see those values uh, in, um, in, in your catalog. So, um, so that information can be you know, com completely configurable. For example, there's the total inventory cost, which will be the quantity at, on hand uh, plus uh, the cost per item. So you can have all that information quickly available, understand uh, costs and everything if that you update, update real time in where used. So you can do things, uh, you know, you can have a total product like the, the Bicycle example, and you can also, uh, you know, have, for example, uh, you know, plan a, creating a, a sales order or a, do a what-if scenario. So even if you have other tools to do costing, uh, even if you have a ERP or MRP or CRM, it's very useful that just from an engineering costing tool, you can bring some sub-assemblies, you add a few items together, you can do some what-if scenarios, you can have a tool to quickly can, can give you a calculation about you know, how this is going to cost, and you can quickly give a, a cost estimation very quickly and very easily. Now, uh, on Jared's example, we also had an issue with uh, filings. Uh, so th that could be also a common scenario when you are trying to update an Excel master list, redrawing links, and um, so that can very easily become um, outdated. So our approach is collecting data directly from CAD systems. So you can use uh, you know, different CAD systems, uh, in Inventor, SolidWorks, uh, Fusion, Onshape. So very different systems that you, you have, but our vision is that you can extract data and create build materials from CAD. Uh, you can uh, pre-select a few set of uh, derivative files like PDFs, or uh, DXFs, so any sort of production file that you want to share with your suppliers. And every time you click that Create Bomb button, you're going to get the PDF updated uh, directly. So uh, you can see it from inside SolidWorks. So you can see the generated PDFs. And you can also see it from your BOM interface. So, um, so this is a, you know, a better way of working instead of using Excel is that you know, the data is updated uh, real time. You just need, it's a link, but the link is always updated. You can also make it revision uh, specific. Like if you create a new revision, you, you have historical links uh, there. So you have, you know, when you sent this from SolidWorks, this was at a previous revision. Uh, when you then uh, move into a new revision, then uh, this drawing was uh, updated to a, a revision, revision B, and you can keep also, uh, you know, revision columns updated from CAS. So we also saw another example from Jed that is that the revision of the drawing was outdated. So uh, our approach can you know, can maintain all those properties efficiently, sending revisions from from CAD systems. Uh, so you can uh, even map map that data directly, and then uh, you know show uh, show that information directly in um, uh, indirectly in, in Open Bomb, like the cat uh, doc, cat proper being updated. So uh, other examples would be collaborating with uh, suppliers. So obviously you can uh, extract and create a package of this information, as Jared mentioned. So you can do it, uh, you know the normal method where you uh, export, download uh, a, a drawing pack with all the PDFs, all the step files in one go from a, from an existing build material or product. So you, you can always uh, do that. But our, uh, our approach is, uh, you know, doing something a bit different is uh, actually giving access to the supplier to use OpenBOM. You can download the PDFs, Directly from Open Bomb, it can also update prices if you if you give him access to do so. So uh, a, a better approach will be actually doing this, creating a view to the supply. You share this bomb with him. Uh, this would be, for example, a, an example where you are sharing this bomb by a view. So the view is filtering bomb lines where the supplier is bicycle components. So if I if I 
put on the supplier login, he only sees this view and this is the bomb lines that she see. I'm controlling also which columns I want him to see and look that it, only the, the lines where he is the vendor, that's the, the information that he can see. This view can be read only, but you can also can make it that it is editable. So you can even could give access for the supplier to update the latest price from, from his own items. You could share the step files with him or a drawing PDF so he can more accurately create a quote to, you know, to manufacture that for you. This, all this without you know, emails or you know, extra folders, extra manual processes or saving as. So the, the bike example is quite a simple product. So it doesn't have a lot of items, but imagine if you, you have actually a much more complex product with thousands of bond lines. So we have customers with very with products with a lot of lines and all these sort of uh, manual processes, they are really a burden. So if you see that advantages for you, evaluate, you know, moving away from Excel and using using uh, open bomb to you know have the accuracy on, on data, accuracy on uh, quantities. And uh, you know everything is uh, is accurate, um, so all that can lead into you know typos. Um, you know all that manual process will create uh, you know risk of errors, and uh, you know taking this digital approach where everything is you know coming from CAD systems, it's digital. You can manage revisions easily, and it is a, a database. Well, it looks a bit like Excel, but it's a database as I've shown you um, to work through. There's a lot of other areas where we can, uh, you know, manage uh, also uh, costs and manage costs in different ways. So we can also manage, for example, total inventory costs. So if you go into a catalog, uh, you can you could create a property that, uh, you know, sums all the quantity on hand. So, for example, this inventory cost property, it's just a very simple formula that shows um, quantity on hand plus cost. And again, similar to Excel, you create a new column, uh, you name it as you wish, and then you uh, activate totals. So you can see the totals at, at the bottom there. So um, another very easy way to manage costs. We can also uh, you know, manage costs using orders. I'm not going through uh, quite a, a complete order process uh, from end to end, but we can uh, rehearse that we want to uh, make, uh, like, for example, not only one bike, but we want to make, uh, see the total cost to make, uh, you know, a few units, 100 units, 100, 50, how much that's going to cost. So we, we're going mul to multiply the quantities and uh, you can have that also that cost calculation in terms of what are the totals. Open bomb can also calculate quantity gaps for you. Uh, for example, it's listing for the order of, of five units. We have two Look at the wheel example, we have two wheels in stock. Uh, you need 10 wheels and you have eight. So we can also automate the creation of uh, POs. So uh, all these functions are included if you wanted to have you know, simple inventory management. And uh, we can also automate the creations of uh, you know, documents like this one to, to send to suppliers. So that's, uh, that's our vision. Our vision is to you know, work on a cloud-based system where everybody has easy access available anywhere from any device. You, um, you share data real time. You can create and freeze revisions. Uh, so you can have historical views. You, can, you have moments that you, you can freeze the data that you name as you know, release, like revision I, revision B. You know, that's the, you know, the data that you want to share with, with others. And you keep updating the latest um, information from multiple systems, multiple Sources of design, we just saw a very simple example that we, we are receiving data from SOLIDWORKS, but we could receive from Altium Designer, other sources, users collaborating real time, uh, evolving the, the product costing. Um, one example of collaboration is, uh, for example, you send data from, from the CAT system where uh, someone from procurement might be detailing costs for materials. For, in this example, the, the CAD data goes up to the reflector plate. So that's what you are receiving from SOLIDWORKS. It's just a reflector, reflector there. But in real time, someone can be updating material costs, uh, like in a different unit of measure. So that's, uh, you know, the unit of measure is, is 
could be inches and someone is already planning materials planning costs like labor everything real time instead of a being more like a, a, a waterfall scenario that when the one department you know sends data to the next department so saves as excel and then sends the file and then you, you calculate materials and then you have an update and revision that can get really challenging so our value proposition is actually you know make things make things real time on a very easy to use uh, interface so uh, yeah, Jared. So what do you think of uh, this approach compared to your Excel uh, uh, approach? You know, your bill of materials will be as easy as just uh, export to Excel, and and that's it. You will have your Excel sent to your manager. I could have probably had it done in five minutes. So yes, <laughs> thank you, Pedro. Um, we are um, we would also like to open up to any questions that you guys have. Uh, so if you guys do have any questions, just hit that chat icon uh, in the upper right hand corner and feel free to ask any questions that you guys do have. We'll give you guys a few minutes to to uh, type these out. Yes. Okay. Uh, Pedro, is multi-sourcing supported? uh yeah that's a great question yeah we do support um, multiple sourcing so you can from an existing item uh you go into the main catalog and you set sourcing so uh in this interface you can configure the different sort of uh, sourcing options and differences so uh, for example for the same item we have different uh vendors or different suppliers you can also distinguish the manufacturer part number, the different costs, uh, different lead times. So you can add any any extra properties that you want to manage for each supplier, even uh, uh, store links. If you have a, a link for a specific one where it's, you have their online catalog, you can you can put those links there and then uh, just managing them directly. And notice if you change the preferred supply is actually sh changing these these attributes like changing the cost per, per supplier. So the answer is yes, yes, we can. Thank you, Pedro. Are there any other questions? I'll give you guys a few more, you know, just a couple more minutes maybe to think of any additional questions that you guys might have. Here is one, Pedro, how can you, maybe this is a little open-ended, but um, how do you track quantity on hand? So the quantity on hand can be updated through orders. So when, uh, when you create an order, you can, uh, you can receive them. So uh, you, you create POs from, from existing orders. Uh, these orders go to a suppliers list so you can go into po's we'll go into a suppliers list to uh, according to the gaps that you have so if you receive this uh, po this is going to increase the quantity on hand that you have uh, if you release the order so if you go back and on a previous order like this one and you uh, release to production this is going to increase the that part number by five and it's going to consume the quantity uh, quantity required for for that specific material you can also make orders directly from the catalog so you can uh, create an order from here or even add multiple items to the same order and just do an order because you have um uh, you are low in stock uh and we are also you know evolving the, the on the next release to have uh filters to to filter like valves like less than and, and have more availability to to manage you know low low inventory values and that's it okay. thank you Pedro. um okay do you guys have any other questions 
If not, um, if there are questions that you guys have, or if you want to go a little bit more detailed into your case study, feel free to reach out to us at support at openbomb.com. Um, if you would like to trial this system, you can also do that. Just go to our homepage, click that register now button. If you had a trial and want to extend it, just email us again at support at openbomb.com. Um, thank you everyone for joining. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you everyone.